All right, hey guys, welcome again to Fire Alarms and Such, and it is time for another edition of What the Heck Is It? And today we are going to be talking about door holders. What the Heck Is It is probably going to be replacing my Explained series, because I kind of like the name better. I, I think it's kind of stupid, which I kind of like. So let's dive right into what a door holder is, what purpose they serve, how they work, how to wire them up, all that jazz. So, let's fly over to the door holder, shall we? Root -doo 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 -doo. We're here. So, this is my door holder. That's it, right there. Mine, like most, is incredibly strong. I can't get it off the mount because they are rated to be holding very, very, very heavy, solid, sometimes even metal fire doors. And what happens is when a fire alarm is introduced into the system or some sort of alert, uh, what's, oh my gosh, what is the condition? Whew. It will, the panel will tell the door holders to release the door. And the way it works is that the doors on a door holder are usually on a spring hinge like this or a door holder, which is like that thing with the arm that comes off and then there's the big block on the door that's a hydraulic or sometimes pneumatic door holder or door closer mine's just on spring hinge because it was simpler and then the magnet it's a magnet that's all it is is one big electromagnet is keeping it on the wall until a fire condition exists the magnet releases and the door closes i need my screwdriver because i want to close the door and show you what I mean. I do not recommend what I'm about to do. I really, really, really do not recommend what I'm about to do. I just pulled the power cord on it. So you see now the magnet is no longer energized. This is the, uh, that is really warm. This is the catch plate here. This is just a big hunk of metal and it's on the door and it comes over to the magnet on the wall. Wow, that is really loose. The whole box is loose. I've almost pulled this out of the wall. Um, so this is the actual magnet. This is what, this is the flush mount version, so normally it would be like in the wall, but all it is, is two wires. It just takes literally just power. <laughs> That's it. It literally just needs power to become a magnet. And then the door sits on it, and then it releases and closes. And that's, you know stops the blockage of smoke it kind of stops the blockage of fire but eh, it, the main thing is to control smoke spreading and to contain the fire uh, a lot of times they have kind of a more i don't want to call it airtight but a better seal around and it kind of helps snuff out the fire ish you know it's just to put as many walls between you and the fire so let's actually talk about how most door holders are wired up. So you can see right now, it is not energized because all well, the magnets not working. But if you were to energize it, it would become a magnet again. Again, I highly, highly, highly do not recommend doing what I'm doing. Never, ever, ever work on a live panel. So see, it's magnet again. It's holding my screwdriver. We're just gonna leave that there. So the way this works is most panels will have a spot called like auxiliary power or something. That gives out supervised, usually 24 volts of power. Just flat out, uninterrupted power. This is what you're gonna be using most times. Sometimes, you know, you'll have external power supplies and relays and all this junk. This is the door holder. 
in its simplest form this is for lighter doors because those usually take like 24 or 120 volts 120 volts gives you more magnet strength so this is a basic door holder setup you usually use one of the relays on your panel or some sort of external relay whatever and you go from your aux auxiliary power you have one side of your auxiliary power that is not touched by the relay at all like this red one the positive goes straight from here straight to the magnet the black one the negative is what is actually being interrupted so you have the negative coming from the auxiliary power and that comes in to one side of my relay and comes out the other side of my relay the relay you want to set it on is normally closed or NC so you'll be going through terminal C and NC it's labeled like that on most panels because you want it normally closed so in a normally in a normal condition the circuit is closed which you know seems all right counterintuitive closed you're blocking the flow of electricity no closed means that it's it has contacts and open means that those contacts are well open so say you know here's your wire here's i'm the other wire this is closed they're touching the bridge is closed an open circuit they're open wires are not touching there's an open gap there's no electricity flowing closed open little electronics basics so that is how you're going to be running through your relay and then after that it's a it's a manner it's a manner of panel by panel basics of programming it telling it okay this relay is my door holder here's how i want a door holder to act there are many different scenarios, you know, what alarms will cause a door holder to, to drop its magnet, what happens when the AC current stops, how long after an alarm do you want the door to close, you know, some codes, some codes say, okay, it has to be open for a minute and a half to allow for evacuation, or some codes say, have it closed immediately, all depends on your local code. Then, you know, you have your settings of what happens when it loses AC power, how long after the power loss do you want the door to stay open? mine in both cases i have set as immediately so there's no timer as soon as an alarm is initiated any fire alarm the door will close as soon as the power drops the door will close so we're going to drop the screwdriver and we are going to do that over at we are going to open up i'm sorry these next few videos are going to be a mild disaster because I just bought a big lot of fire alarm keys and I updated some of my keys and so I got to remember you know what they look like where they are on my ring um, oh my gosh here it is got my Edwards key so we're going to be doing it over here at my SIGA just because it has a switch and I can just leave it open so you'll see when I flip the switch panel will go into alarm and the door holder will drop the screwdriver. There's some wheel lock action for ya. Yeah. So you see, this is going to be happening a lot. You can see the magnet drop the screwdriver. And it is no longer energized because they do not want the door to be propped back open. Say, like, during evacuation processes. So that way people don't, like, you know, pop the door open and be like, oh, I'm being nice. But see, now the panel reset. And it's a magnet again. These magnets are pretty strong. Here's a back box. Here's your back box. Like, these are strong, strong magnets. Now let's get that door up there. So, some doors are heavier than others. So, I know we have some pretty solid fire doors at my school. And sometimes, you know, kids will be, you know, walking down the hall and they'll bump into one and it'll close and everyone's like oh my gosh don't touch the door 
And I'm like, really, guys, you just got to open it and push it till the magnets touch. It's not that hard, but people refuse to do it. And it's something I've never understood. Why are people so scared of a magnet? You just got to open the door back up. Some doors are lighter, like this one, and won't come off. So you'll see some areas that will have like a manual release pull station or something. Because in my school, the protocol for a tornado drill, because we are in a tornado prone area, is to close all fire doors because, you know, it helps contain us. So ours, thankfully, are heavy, so they can just be pulled. But lighter doors, which we do have some, have to have a manual release to be able to drop the door. I'm planning on getting one. It'll be like right here. It'll just be a simple button. You press it and the door will close. There's a good indicator that a door holder is on the door, if you don't see it, is this little bracket. That's what actually holds the uh, catch plate on the door. I don't really have much else to say, except you want to see something kind of cool. I have the door on like its lightest tension because I don't need to be slamming it all around. This is not a necessary part of the video. If you don't want to watch it, you can end now. I'm not really going to teach you anything else. Um, there's nothing vital anymore. All right, there goes the door. Ooh, this is gonna be kind of hard. Um, we're gonna stick the magnet there to catch the little pin. There's the pin. This is what literally holds the hinge in tension. We're going to turn it way up. I gotta set this down. I'm All right, so after way. dropping the little peg many times, it is now at its highest tension. So we are going to re-energize the magnet by hooking our wire back up. I again strongly 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 do not recommend doing what i'm doing never ever work on a live panel like that especially when you're just working with straight power i'm not being smart right now but i know what i'm doing it's my panel so now we got some pretty good tension on the door like that's a good slam still not enough pulled off the wall but we will pull oh left that in there we will now pull a fire alarm let's do it There's a reason I keep that on very low tension is because it slams everything. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned what the heck a door holder even is. So thank you guys for watching. And as always, have a wonderful day.